I'll record you doing the palette a little bit. Yeah, I could look these things up too. <clears throat> so now I am gonna want I can always lift this the up. The microphone. I am gonna want to like I have you have probably zoom recorder. Um, I am gonna want to have you show this a little bit. So you might need to be able to like zoom over here. We'll yeah. talk about this before I start painting. Yeah. Now I can zoom over there easily. Oh my god. And I can take this off of the thing too. Oh yeah, that was the one I did that other day. That's the one you wanted to buy, so I'm all done. Um, so, with this demo, though, you probably want to record your voice. I didn't think that I should have brought the Zoom recorder. Don't worry. If you're recording this, this will capture my voice. Okay, yeah. It just won't capture as good as the uh, recorder. Okay. Good. Yeah, no, it'll be good enough. All right, I'll turn this off. Charging what? The oh, this should be all charged. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm leaving it plugged in because we had that problem with it. Yeah. You know before so, um, but we won't even be using that until. Do you want to start talking to the camera and then sit no. down there? Or? No, I'm going to talk. They're going to see my face from here. Okay. Cool. All right. Excellent. So then I'll just leave this off. Uh -huh. Twenty-two. All right. Before you start anything. Please take a breath and think about what you're going to do. And, you know, are you going to block in your shadows first or are you going to fill in your lights first? I tend to like to have my image. We were joking with Rachel because she said she printed out on Xerox and it came so huge. That happens, you know. But on the monitor, I like to have my image the same size. Just so in case, like, I want to do a quick little thing, like, oh my god, what is the top? You know, for me, I'm just like, I put a little line. You know, I don't grid things out. And you guys can tell from my, um, my pastel slideshow that I was drawing the same model twice, and the drawing was so different. It's because I was doing them so fast. I didn't really care that much, like, oh, it's a portrait commission. So I keep telling myself this is not a portrait commission. <sighs> okay. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because she's mainly in light, I am going to mass in, and I'm going to take this, this, because it's like a, let me see, I could even use all of them. Let me see, okay, I'm going to do this. You see how I'm, I'm not using any medium? If I used any medium, all my paint would just roll, roll down. So I'm just taking paint, and I'm just kind of scumbling. It's like a dry paint. So. What this allows me to do is because it's not slippy, because it's not too, you know, like juicy, I'm just creating a base. And I want you guys to see that this, I could totally do this. I could be like, okay, just what's the chin to her forehead? All right, you know, just, just that. There you go. That's how I just size it. And I'm scumbling it. I'm keeping my brush literally on the canvas and I'm kind of moving the paint. It's like just moving the amount of paint you have and just squishing it over. Because this is not about thick paint today. It's about just playing with colors. And now all of a sudden, this value right here looks against this sort of, now this gray looks so warm. By itself, it doesn't look that warm, but it's all about um, relationships, color is. Yeah. Someone asked to repeat what board you are using on this. Okay, the board I'm using is um, museum board. And I, there's a video on the Facebook thing that shows you how I prepare these. And it really is just, um, I think you can get it in Strathmore and Canson, but I think this is Canson. But if you go to any art supply store, type in museum board. What it is, is it's boards that museums use to use, do archival um, drawings, or it's the boards that they use for any sort of storage or any sort of matting um, for art. art it's acid-free and the color is light fast. It'll, yeah, won't so they, fade. Have, they have a couple different um, tones. Like this is, I think, that sort of neutral gray. Then they have white and they have cream. But look at how green that looks. That's kind of fun. I love just having these combos. Okay. So now I have this like light shape. Very simple, right? 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a value of just doing the five, these big shapes. So I'm going to use a little bit of my meridian. Let's see, you know, I'm just testing these different greens out. This is really just like that pastel. You start off with one, and as long as you don't go too fast, you can always tweak it. Like say something is just too, too, too yellow. Well then you go, okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more of that. So, so let's see what this is. So figuring out just kind of like where the eye socket is. And you see how I paint through the eye socket? I'm not outlining anything. I'm angling down to doing the sunglass of the face. Because there's paint there already, it's going to mix together. So that's why you actually, sometimes you have to like reestablish. Because if you put down, even though this is really thin, if you put that down, it will mix and you'll start to see it. Okay. But these are exercises. I want you guys to have bold strokes and not think about, you know, like, oh, fancy. This is not a fancy brushwork at all. Okay. So remember I told you about walking over the form? So we go from this shape and we walk over the light shape. I'm looking at the reference and then I put a little dab. And then I always do this is one eyebrow higher than the other. Her right eyebrow is the slightest bit higher. It's probably just, everybody's a little bit natural, right? So you put a little dab. Sometimes people, it's like shocking how like basic this is in the beginning. So you can kind of keep, make sure that distance doesn't get too far. In the very beginning, think in angles, but the whole eye socket. Underneath the eye is very important. Don't forget that underneath the ball of the eye is so important. I say, I kind of, remember I was telling you the tear duct, I just kind of guesstimate like where the tear duct is right there. Just guesstimate and I put a little dot. Because that's going to help me. You always want to know where the tear duct is so you can know exactly vertically where something falls. The side of the nose is right there. So I, I walk down and I see where the top of the wing of the nose and then I just create that line. Finding the sides of noses is so important. I used to be so wishy-washy. It makes people look like um, stuffed animals. So solidify everything underneath here. The size brush I'm using is um, a size three, and it is a long filbert series 278. It's just one of those um, mixed hairs. You see, it's just like, it's like a little bit of a filbert. What brand is that? It's a rosemary. But any brand. But I, I do use a lot of rosemary because I feel like they are very high quality. So I just kind of walk, 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 walk down. I see exactly where that little this puzzle piece. So I don't look to see where, what, like the nostril paint through it. But remember I double check exactly where it could be different on either side, you know? But look for the tear ducts. And think it angles. You see how it kind of angles up and then it angles and then it kind of so it changes direction and angles down here. And then that side, 
touches the temple. So that's what I mean where you kind of like walk the form and her. So if I walk over, walk over, walk over, and then all of a sudden the temple's right there. I personally like to do the interior of faces. I don't worry, especially if, you know, if you're just kind of blocking in like this, everyone's a little different. And maybe if I was to do these a hundred times, maybe I'd do a shortcut or something. So I, the shadow of the nose, I walk and the lips pretty much touch. So I'm only going to be painting the top lip because I'm doing the five darks of the face. Just that top lip. Lips are the softest things in the face. So I'm definitely not going to make them as dark or as contrasty as other stuff. Also, you start to realize that, okay, she's pretty much, her brick eye is just the slightest bit higher, but I think it's just natural to her. Because she's really straight on to me. She's not tilted. She naturally, her right eye is just a little bit higher. But her nose, everything else should be in alignment with that. So. You know, you have, that's the thing about going down, going down, going down, walking, walking, walking. And once you get this middle, you can see it's one side of the lip higher than the other. It could be even a centimeter. And that's what's going to show their expression, even if it's just a centimeter. And of course, we're seeing this slightly from the side, so it's oh, narrowing a little bit. You can mention yeah. that because it won't look exactly yeah. the way you're seeing it. So you guys have the actual picture of her <coughs> on your computer. So you see how I, I go back to that shadow, I go, walk over, there's that shadow where the lip right there, I walk over the bottom lip and then I put that little shadow here. These little jumps are what I'm talking about when you do, um, when you do your like little walkovers. And then I kind of and I walk over the chin. This probably does look pretty weird. It's green. It's okay. Let's see. I hope you guys mix big enough piles because if you have to constantly, constantly keep mixing your paint, oh my god, that's like, it's just a habit to get into. And believe me, I'm not always great at it. That's the number one thing I get frustrated with is if like, I realize that I don't make my piles big enough, so I'm just sort of getting, making sure that my angles are correct here. So hopefully from across the room, if somebody saw this, they'd go, yeah, that's a face. It's a weird green face, but it's a face. So the distance between this, so we can do here, see where does that come to her eye? Always double check vertically and horizontally where things come. And also then how close this little muscle is to this cheek. And pretty girls and young girls, you, you look for those heart shapes. You look for pretty girls have smaller chins, you know, like youth and so her chin's gonna come to a point and you can do that sort of beautiful V of her cheeks. So what I also do is I figure out exactly where the, the sharp angle of her cheek is before it changes direction. So right here. So where does that come? It's really almost, almost on the same plane as her highlight. So where would her highlight be? Like right there? See, I was so, so impressed with you guys. Beginner painters being able to leave your shadows, I'm going to go to a slightly bigger brush, to your um, shadows simple and your lights clean. I mean, I can't, I mean, you guys don't believe me, but that's not easy. Like people who've painted for years and you tell them or you ask them to do something and you say, hey, could you simplify this? Could you just tell me where the light, the shadow starts and the light? They would want to soften everything because we're programmed. So that's why if you can get a good habit and you can just teach yourself to like simplify stuff in the beginning, it's gonna look so much more painterly and you'll be ahead of the game.
it seems like in the beginning you're working with more straight angles. Totally. You straight angles. Repeat that as I say. So okay. straight yeah. angles is what creates form and planes. So if I was to be wishy-washy and everything was to be um, overly like softened or worried about technique, a lot of times the drawing and the stuff disappears. So yeah, in the beginning you just be as graphic as you possibly can. Um, a little soft edge, a little transition here or there towards the end, that's all you need. I mean the more you look at a sergeant, the more you realize that everything was just so simple and then he just put a sharp edge or a little color here or there and it was like it just made everything I have to keep reminding myself okay do not go as dark on the right as on the left because remember this is this is um, in the light the temples so what I could do too is I could just say well, how high I don't like to I don't like to guess at foreheads because foreheads get too big and exactly where is her part so how did you do that measurement I literally just put my finger and my brush up against the reference on the monitor that's why I like to paint. Are you um, painting the same size as yeah. the monitor? I tend to. Uh, it's very rare that I don't paint the same size as my monitor. So you can just take that unit and move it right to your yeah, painting? Yeah, exactly. It's, you this you is, might want to repeat that. They might so I just take um, that exact unit measurement that I did from my monitor and I just move it to my painting. Now, that is why I like to have monitors and I like to paint the same size. but. Also, for these quick ones, like I know I this is going to be a quick thing. This is not going to be something that I'm going to be working on for months, you know, or days. But even if I was to be working on a more important piece, sure, I would have the head be the exact same size. Now, I might not be able to fit the whole image, but I'm only painting like maybe just the head at one time. And see, this monitor moves. So I can make it vertical. So if I'm doing a slightly larger thing, I can maybe get the head and hands in. But I just do close-ups. How would you do that if you didn't have it the same size as the monitor? Um, Scott, why don't you answer that? Because I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, okay. You would. You, <laughs> I. Okay. You know, I. I just. I'm. I'm not for that. You know, like seeing so you know how people paint from a tiny photograph, and they paint big. Well, I'm always asking them why, or I just don't know, Scott. I mean, you help me out with that question because in modern technology, why would you do that? Why would you make it hard for yourself? Well, wouldn't you just compare like that forehead thing to something else in the yeah, face? Yeah, but why? Okay, cool. Now, that's different from painting from life because like you guys saw that I painted that little red painting and she was tiny. And of course, I was super close to her, so sure. <laughs> It's comparable, like I'm not painting her life size because otherwise it would be like full. But it, the surface of my little canvas was small and I wanted to do a little head. So yeah, I made a comparable little face to her measurements. But if I'm working from a reference, I just don't understand why I would make it harder for myself. And that could just be me, I don't know. So I'm just kind of mixing in hair, and I'm really going to try and do the hair more transparent. So I'm not going to try and put um, white in it so that it actually stays dark. So I'm, see, I'm just picking it without having any white. And also, I'll do this, like I'll, like the side of the eyebrow to the hair, do a quick little thing. And as you guys see, as I, when I paint it fast, you know, it's like my, my drawing is a, it's not like perfect, but I'm not worried about it. <coughs> right. Someone had a question, how do you save your leftover piles of paint? Um, you can show them. <coughs> you should repeat the question. Okay. So this doesn't look, this is what I was painting um, last week. You, you can show them that. 
Oh yeah. So there's people have different things. So like like Scott has a box that closes, and um, he can just close the box. And actually, I want one of those. I'm gonna have to get our friend Michael to make me one. Um, I'm gonna actually ask him to make me one. Maybe it's like 16 by 20. I like working on a white palette. I feel it helps me get my lights cleaner. But I would love to have... So you have plastic over that? I just have saran wrap. So I just have saran wrap. When I leave at night, and I come back, and I lift it up, and I clean it up. Now, if you were going to be gone from your palette for a few days, um, you can add a little bit um, of poppy oil. So you can add little drops of poppy oil to your um, piles, and they will stay wet for a long time. So, but I really want something that closes. And Scott has stuff like that. But that's how I do it. I just sort of put, I, I just use, you know, that, that kitchen saran wrap. Okay. This is looking really cool. Is it? Yeah. I think it's looking a little weird. No, it's cool. I don't know why I'm doing these demos. So that I'm like, really fun. Why I feel like, I'm like telling people, do this and I'm like okay well I don't know if I did it right and then I see people post stuff I'm like wow they did it so much better <laughs> really fun and fun and graphic and so yeah it is very graphic but the lesson is I'm using a fan brush now because I love fan brushes because you can really manipulate them you can like do really cool brush strokes you can use the side of them you can make them flat you can go up and down and um, very painterly strokes I like brushes that are thin, meaning that they don't have a lot of hair. So I'm kind of coming down here, I have a little ponytail. Are you adding uh, medium or turpentine to this? I'm adding a little bit of Gamsol just to like make the paint go a little bit, um, but it's very little. It's like hardly any because, yeah, so I'm going to say a baby dab of Gamsol, but no, no medium. And questions about how long does it take the poppy seed oil to dry? I really don't know, but a long time. You might have to repeat that. I don't know how long the poppy seed oil lasts, but um, <clears throat> it's really good if you're just, you know, if, you, if you're going to leave your palette for a few days. You're it, just putting a drop on top? Yeah, you just, what I do is I just take a brush or I take a palette knife and I dip it in, because you don't want to do too much, and I just dip some in and I kind of, like a bait, like an eyedropper. And then I just kind of mix it up, and then, you know, believe me, it's still going to be good for um, the next day. If I was using medium, I think my paint would all just fall off my palette since it's vertical. So see where my ear comes. I'm having a lot more fun painting in green than me trying to do like traditional like that's like I've been kind of harping on you know like oh my god is this like the perfect you know tone for her face oh how do you paint someone who's fair how do you paint some like I just it's so much more fun to just only think about value and then just like play with like funky colors I'm still trying to give her that V on this side, but I just have to make sure that I don't um, go as dark. But definitely, I'm glad somebody noticed, it is definitely angles. The more angular you paint, especially in the beginning, I just can't tell you that just a few little soft strokes here or there then you have you have something nice. Whereas so, if everything's a little bit too wishy-washy, a little bit too soft, finding harder edges is much harder. Like, someone asked what size uh, Peshad box this is. This is tiny. This is a little travel one. I mean, I think that this is, uh, I, I mean, it's the smallest one that um, Go Edge Pro have. Looks like eight by ten. Yeah, it's probably like an eight by ten, or it's actually a little bit more horizontal. But I really like those um, Yugos. So they're cheaper and they're lighter weight. You can get the U 
go, like literally you, go. And you can get those almost anywhere now, but I know that they were selling them at Jerry's. Um, they're just lightweight and they're, everything's magnetic. You don't have to like worry about like little screws and stuff. So I always want to make the neck less important. Be careful about showing like neck, that guillotine light. Okay, so before I go into the face at all, I want you to realize, when I posterized it, it got really dark. But even in the, just the black and white, you see this value when I squint, it's darker. So I need to, I want to, I need to make something that's a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna see what it looks like to add some of this turquoise. I still don't know if I'm going to add um, some pinks on top. That's just going to see, like, do I need it? So I'm just adding. I'm just trying to see what a value is. Because I need this value to be darker so that the, her face really pops. Now, if you guys did this and you forced yourself to do like an hour portrait once a day and put numbers on them. Could you imagine what you'd have after a month? Just forcing yourself to do stuff. Could you imagine how fast you would learn? But also it's all about limiting your expectations and, judge, and judging your work. Like you have to be able to say, some of them are just not gonna come out. You're gonna get finished with them and they're just going to be like, oh, oh, all right, that was a lesson. So you just, I'm going to have to see, oh, also my palette's so little. You can use up the space a lot, but I have to put out more paint. So I'm putting out more Viridian and I'm putting out more of this ultramarine green. I kind of like this ultramarine green. It's like a mixture of blue and green. But it's a little bit of slight gray. It's not like it's not like a fluorescent. I'm using my fan brush. I like you see because the fan brushes, you see how you can kind of scumble, you can kind of like be transparent, you can kind of move paint around. It blocks in things pretty fast without that much paint. You know, I can also like car, I can go right up to the edge and they can use it like a point. You know, I wish I could see people's faces. So I could like, I'm sure it's a little bit easier to ask questions like when you're here. So this side over here, I'm not going to define that much because the shadow side, I don't need to show a sharp edge. The background is showing through a little bit. There's that influence of that kind of warm, it's just an influence, right? So I'm just kind of scumbling it so that I don't have like strong like, okay. Feel like I need to clean off my palette. So the best way to clean off your palettes are these little scrapers. It's so nice to be able to clean off your palette. Now this is a dark gray. I wish I had a white one. I think they sell, I don't know if they sell a white palette for this small, but the Yugos come with a white palette. And I have a white palette for my larger GoPro. I like working on white palettes now, and the reason why is because my lights look more rich against white, whereas when you're working on something this dark, your lights can seem almost too light, and that can make you go too light in your lights, if you can understand that. Well, it makes you go darker, right? Exactly. It makes you, your mind is saying, oh, it's too light. So for me, it might not be for you guys, but for me, like, I 
had issues. Like I felt that I had to go cleaner lights. So I felt like a white palette really helped me. Okay, so what would I do next? What I do next is I do my middle shapes on top of these. And that's my darker shapes in my eyes. So let me pick a brush. I guess this brush is fine. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna use the number three. This mixed um, Filbert Series 278. I think it's called like a master's choice. I think it's like a mixture of like synthetic and some kind of natural or they made it up, I don't know, but it's really good. Okay, so when you do this, honest to God, you have to think about drawing and painting at the same time. Because if I put it down and I start to change and I start to change and I start to change, what's going to happen is the paint is going to get lighter and lighter because just initially moving it around, the value mixes in what's underneath and it gets lighter and lighter. Um, and that's probably why a lot of times people are like, oh, why is my paint so muddy? Or why do I not have any good lights and darks? It's because we're trying our hardest to take a stroke, put it down, and leave it. And that's why doing fast little things is the easiest way to teach ourselves. So you see how I kind of want to put it down. The ultimate is to try not to over soften. So I'm going to paint through the eye. I have to keep applying paint because otherwise I can I can like soften little ridges, but I just know that if I keep touching it, it's going to mix with what's underneath. So I'm really just using Viridian and that ultramarine green, right? Just with no white, just all by itself. Strengthening now these the darker shapes within this. So that value that I put down, which looked dark to begin with, is now looking lighter. Someone asks, so you like to start with the lights, then the darks, and then the middle tones? Well, what I did was I started with the lights, the middle tones, and now I'm working in the darks. Good, that's what she's asking, yeah. Now, I did that because in the beginning I talked to you guys about she is mainly in light. So if I just put in her darks, then I would just be painting the light up to those darks. So why not solidify the larger shape and then just and then have that be my light and then paint my me mediums and darks. So so I paint I never paint my darks before I paint my mediums because you put your darks on top of your mediums. Because the whole idea is to paint large, medium, small. And your darks are smaller shapes. So the darks are these smaller shapes that go on top of these middle. So if it was backlit, you might start with a more middle That's value. too advanced. Okay. I don't want to be hypothetical. Cool. So I'm kind of painting through this. And this eye is it's more in shadow, remember, because the light is coming from the right. So some of it is sh is like mixing through, but I know that I just can't keep touching it because every time I do, I go, ooh. So I have to keep applying more paint. And my whole idea is to hopefully put down a stroke and leave it. Hopefully put down a stroke and leave it. And that takes a lifetime of practice. So this is, you know, it's not something that like, all of a sudden, someone tells you to do it, and you're like, oh, magically, I can do it. It really takes a lot of practice to kind of allow yourself the ability to put something down and not touch it again. Someone's wondering about the sharp edge on that dark shadow on the side of her face, if you're going to leave that or soften that. Oh, well, we'll see. You might want to have to... Which, you know, which, sha which shape is she talking about? You know, about? that, that cheek, cheek dark right shadow, yeah. Oh, yeah, hopefully I'll get to it. No, it, it, it should have a transition. <coughs> but you see how um, you start off very, very blocky, very, very graphic, and then 
and only if you have time. So you start to paint for the time allotment that you have. So, like say you only have an hour, well then the amount of details is less. Say you have three hours, well then you might have a few more details. It's all about what the time allotment you have. And, and the whole idea with short little paintings is not to think of them as things that you would spend a week on. So I don't just spend, um, you know, I don't go in and start giving the details in the eyes because I just don't have time. So I'm definitely making sure the distance between here, I walk over, walk over, walk over. This, if you get the eyes too far apart, that's important, so. So this side has less dark. There's a little bit of a dark shape right here. And then a dark shape for the dark of the eye. I'm squinting too. I'm squinting when I look. Less information. But it shows you that that initial eyeglass, eye, you know, sunglass shape. You see, every time I touch it, it, br it picks up paint from underneath. So I tried to emphasize a little bit earlier that painting and drawing at the same time is, the, uh, is what you hope to do. And if I did this like every single day, I would just get so much better at it, so much better at it, to where it's almost like doing scales on the piano. You just know like how to simplify a stroke. And that's why I challenge you guys to like do an hour portrait a day. That is the best lesson you possibly could do. And when I am able to, let's make a double check that so I'm see, I'm see one eye higher than the other. And they're about the same. Even though one eyebrow is higher than the other, her eyes are completely in alignment. I like making sure that I give people that little bit of character because it just makes them look unique. So I'm trying my hardest to leave that initial eyeglass, sunglass look. The hope doesn't always work. The hope is to leave as much as you can so you can still see that. So you could do this in any color. I mean, this could be pink. This could be black and white. It really doesn't matter. I'm just using green because it seems fun. I'm always double checking that I have that lower lid because she has a strong lower lid. And if you don't give her that lower lid, she, her eyes start to look much smaller. So now let's go down to the nose. So you see how I give a certain amount of information and then I have to move on because of the time limit. So I'm not gonna go in there and if I don't even get to the highlight, well then you don't get to the highlight. But try not to just go into details too fast. Too much information too fast. Okay, so now let's go into the nose. So. I'm using, actually this is a very old lane nickel, so you can't even get these anymore. So it's just a, a soft lane and mixed brush with like a long hair. So I don't want to overemphasize um, that there's a dark, strong dark right here. Try to have nostrils kind of blend in with the shadow around it. There's nothing worse than just having a nostril stand out and just look like a cave.
For the self-portraits, would you recommend working from a mirror or photos? Either one. Repeat. If you for a self-portrait, if you can do a self-portrait from a, a mirror, then yeah, it forces you to be so observant. Um, if you're if this is kind of new to you, I would suggest trying to do some from a photo. But really look at the different lighting on your face. You know, do overhead, do side. But it is, you know, if you look about all the masters in history from self-portraits, so, hey, it really is something that if getting models is not something that would be easy for you, well, self-portraits, you are your own free model. Okay, so see, that's all I'm going to do right there for now. So you do things to a certain finish, and then you go on. And you do things to a certain finish, and you go on. So now I'm going to walk down, and I'm just going to do a little bit on the lips. The lips, to me, are the opportunity to be the softest, the most expression. In fact, lots of times I leave lips to the very, very end so that I'm forced to kind of be a economical with my strokes. You know, one little muscle here or there, lips should look like they can move. They shouldn't look like they are hard. Noses should look three-dimensional. So you can have harder edges on noses. up a little bit right there. The hurt lip almost touches that shadow right there. So when you start to walk the form and you really start to like see how one shape touches the other, it's it will be shocking to you because we naturally would want to make that lip lower, but when so many times the upper lip literally touches that shadow. And that, that will be a revelation to you because it will help you start to see that if you just walk over shapes, you'll start to see how close things are. Meaning like the temple to the eyes or the, you know, the chin to the bottom lip or, you know, all these small little things that we might make too big. See, I'm really focusing on just the interior, just the five darks. If you're a slow painter, and this is all new to you, please just work on the triangle. Just get this. Keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Working on backgrounds or working on hair is not a good use of your time. said from a person who used to work on hair and backgrounds too much. Someone asked <laughs> how big your monitor is. Oh, um, let me measure it. <clears throat> this is a traditional, it's a standard size, I think. So if you go from, this is like a 27 inch, right? So this, you do it by diagonal, I think. So this is like little, like 13 and 1 4 by 23 and a half, but I think they, I think you get them when you say diagonal. Yeah. This is 27. Um, the first Max used to be much bigger, but you can't get them anymore. Now, how do you make sure that the picture on your screen stays the same size if you work on it multiple days as you're painting? Well, I can just leave it open like that. Um, but for me, once I get this in, I don't need it to be the exact, because once you get the drawing, it can be a centimeter slower or bigger. But, um, Scott, you can do it in iPhoto, right? But you well, can in, also photo, do it in, in Photoshop, I <coughs> use the, uh, navigator. the navigator. Yeah, put I in mean, I use room. the navigator too, but yeah. I'm trying to like make it so that people don't have Photoshop. Yeah. You could probably go into iPhoto, and there is a, maybe a tool where it's like, we, in Photoshop, we do it, it's called Navigator. So you get that number, and it will always, it'll be, it's like a percentage. So you will always go, oh, 
Navigator says 33%. So every time I put it into Photoshop, I go to Navigator, I type in 33%, and it exactly does that. But like, um, you don't have, like Scott's done some videos about using iPhoto, and you can do lots of cool stuff with iPhoto. All the people who just, you know, are just new to this. And I have the navigator also in, in one of our videos. Yeah. No, and that's a, that's a, you know, like if I'm painting big and the actual image is bigger, like say I'm doing something that's like 18 by 24 or 30 by 40, my actual image life size will be much bigger than this. And so that is why you use navigator. You get the face, the exact size you want, but the rest of it's going to go off the screen. But then if you want, you're painting the hands or something. So you're painting this little muscle underneath. So I just got a softer brush, and this brush is like one of those you get from like $5. So this is literally, it's called Giro's Precision Tools from Japan. So these are just one of those things you get in a bundle. And I'm just doing it because it's kind of like, I can paint like a little soft down here. That little muscle underneath her lips. Someone asks, for the assignment this week, are we doing this painting in pastels or oils? Hey, both. You better repeat that. Okay, part. so for the assignment, <laughs> um, as you, if you choose to do it, <laughs> um, the assignment is, I did a pastel video, which you guys can watch, and that's on the Facebook page. If you want to try it in pastel, then you can watch that. If you want to do it in oil, then you can try and practice this. But it's really what you want. I, some people don't want to try pastel at all. And you know what? Okay. And some people are really only doing pastel. And I am totally fine with whatever you want. Just like how I kind of like was had, like could not. I went back to pastel as like my friend last summer. You do what makes you feel good. Because I'm supposed to be putting fun back into portraits. I am not supposed to be making it like torture, but I will critique and I will give you suggestions on anything that you submit. You don't even have to use green. The whole thing is to try new stuff, is to try cool against warm, warm against cool. Use the greens that you have if you want to try green. You don't have to use the ones I have. Okay. So wait, let me do one more stroke. Oh, jeez, my monitor timed out. Oh. <laughs> Monitors. So you've been working on this painting for about 45 minutes. Okay. Good deal. See how, yeah, my picture got big, right? Hmm? There's nothing on the screen right now. Oh. Oh, that's yeah. annoying. Okay. See, if, oh. my, if my computer times out, then oh, my the monitor actual. times out, oh, I see. and, okay, no, that's good. Everything's back to normal. Okay. What was the question? Scott? Um, you said something. I thought you said something. No, I just told you how long you've been working. Oh. So, 45 minutes so far. Okay, so what if I said that, yeah, I could only work an hour? then we'll just do that. There is no point in me just like working two more hours or something on this. It, the point is about how do you block in something really fast and how do you use colors that you normally wouldn't. Okay, so now I'm gonna soften that. That's exciting. Okay. The thing about softening an edge like that is that you don't wanna like just totally get rid of it. So what I notice a lot of times people do is they just blend or they just soften it so much to where it disappears. And that's not what I want to do. <clears throat> so it is all about finding points. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to strengthen all things that need to be strengthened. If I soften things too much, you have to put more dark. So darkening underneath the lip. I'm going down and I'm really showing where that bone is. You can do a vertical too and see exactly where the chin comes down below the nose. 
Tell me exactly where that chin comes. And then tell me exactly where this cheek is. These are the areas that should not be overly softened. Where there's bone, it should not be overly softened. Where there is soft flesh, then you can soften that. So as long as I keep those two points relatively defined, I'll mix up a middle, and you can kind of like put a softer right here. Pretty girls too, you know. You you it's tricky, you know. Like you you want them to be soft, but then it's just how much to do, right? So I'm going to mix a value that is in between the shadow and in between the light. So that would be a transition, or what, or what would be called like maybe a half tone. And I'm going to put it right over here, right next to it. Scott likes to call that, what, like a step down? Stepping down the values, yeah. Stepping down the values. Like a stairs, you know. Uh-huh. So I'm really trying to keep this as light as possible, but I can have transitions over here. I want you to think also that like highlights are not important. Like, you know, possibly after this, if I decide, you know, after the demo's done and I'm like, oh, I really want to do a few strokes, my biggest suggestion to you is make sure that you count them. You get a sheet of paper and you, you write down exactly what you're going to do so that you don't go overboard. Because if you just keep painting on it, it's going to turn into a completely different painting. But if you say, I want to do two little strokes right here, I want to do one little stroke right there, and you write it out in sentence form, and you just do what you, you studied your piece and you just do what you said you were going to do, well then it still is in the same vein as like an a la prima, you know, it's still in the same vein of like this quick, fast approach. It's not then laborious, re, you know, refining and turning it into a studio piece after you've done something from life. And I think we've all done that, right? We've all kind of worked on something we started and then it changed to a different energy. It didn't stay the same freshness. So that's how I stop it. I don't always work, but if I'm going to work on something more after the model, I really will give myself limits. And I will look at and study and write down on a sheet of paper the few things that I need to do and then stick to it. stressed, my stomach hurts. Ugh. Probably the moment I stop this demo, my stomach is going to stop hurting. I have to stop. My stomach is hurting so bad. You don't have to stop that. Do you want me to get you something to eat? No, I just have to. Uh, yeah, I have to take a bite of something. I don't know about you guys, but I get stressed when I paint, especially performance. And um, I'm going to turn my mic off. So why don't you guys take a five minute break? Okay. Five minute break. You can just leave it going. All right. I think I can start again. All right. Just turn the mic back on. Okay. Ask people if they can hear you again. And make Hi sure guys, I'm back. I hope you can hear me. Let me know. Yes, we can. Okay, okay. cool. I just had, I don't know about you guys, but like this happens to me, like when I paint sometimes, like I get a lot of anxiety. So, um, I don't know if you guys ever just like get munchies or you get hungry. I don't think it was hunger. I think it was like serious stress. anxiety. It was stress. <laughs> and I'm sure all of you are like, why are you stressed? And um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm stressed. But like it was just such a, a pain in my stomach. I had to stop. <sighs> Which is so weird, right? 
Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So. All right. So let's get back to this. And um, I really just want, so we're going to just, you know, 10, 15 more minutes. So I'm going to take the time to kind of squint. And the hardest part of the, okay, first of all, the hardest thing to do is just to get the drawing right. Get the five shapes, get the triangle. Then walking over and getting these transitions, for me, is the second hardest part. So it's all about, you know, how much to do. And I am constantly telling myself, I want you guys to see I'm, I'm using no real mineral spirits. It, it, it's just the oil from the paint is good enough, all right? No mediums. I personally feel that mediums, well, we can talk about that later, but for this type of thing, mediums would be too much. So I'm trying to kind of like solidify this. Also, I notice that I'm touching my canvas too much. So the moment I touch the canvas too much, see, see how I literally try and put my brush down I'm thinking, oh, I need to put the stroke starting here and I need to angle up. And can I just leave that stroke? So it is kind of like an engineering thing. You do really, really, really have to think about painting and drawing at the same time. So when you think about angles and solidifying shapes, it's like, okay, where do I start and where do I end? And can that, see now I don't like that little thing right there. All right. I'm always telling people, um, be more graphic because it really holds to, people will, it's more pleasing when something is more graphic. We all get caught up with, um, and I say this because I am one of those people, Every brush stroke is too precious or must be important or um, must say more. You know, it's like just get the bigger shapes and you can have some fanciness later on. You can put a, like a pretty highlight or you could do some fanciness, but get the initial stuff good and don't worry about technique. Technique is definitely like the last element of art that's important. See how I keep going back and forth? And the only good thing about demos is that they force you to stop. Because you could, I could work on this over and over and over again just saying, oh, that stroke's not good enough. But that would drive you guys all crazy. So I try to be kind and not do that. But I keep having to reinforce my brush with paint because if I just kept touching this canvas, this value would get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. You'll find that out. It's, you know, it, that's not a mystery. You'll find it out when you're paint. Okay, so now let me put a step down on the cheek again. So if you just put a value that's just in between the shadow and the light, and you just put it next to it, then it doesn't look as harsh. That's the more, I guess, bolder or paint, painterly way. It's the way Scott paints. I mean, Scott rarely will go in there and just smudge something. He will always go in and just add a step down. Rather, my brush is like falling apart. Every, <laughs> that those old Lang nickels? I think that was the problem with them. Uh, yeah, they're really great, but they um, they just kind of like I can tell when I look at my brush stroke, it's like I see a hair just like dangling. I might need to use a uh, pliers on that for you. Wow, that's all right. So, one thing <clears> I'm just going to keep reiterating is that every time I try and put a stroke down, I have to add more paint. I have to add more paint or else the paint that's underneath it will just mix with it. And this is where you use up a lot of paint. So let me see exactly where her ear is. 
always try and use verticals and horizontals whenever you can. Don't just guesstimate. And sometimes you have to measure two, three, four times. You know, it's really important to like measure, 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 measure again and again and again. Okay, so now let's go. Just going to do a few strokes on this hair to kind of soften that transition. And just want to carve that background in just a little bit. So double check exactly where that ear is. See how I'm measuring over and over and over again? You cannot measure too much. Because what happens is you can measure once, but just by putting a stroke down or softening it or doing something, it could just go off a smidge and then off a smidge and then off a smidge. And you can remember, oh, I measured it, but then it's like almost every time you do something, you just measure it again and again and again. So see, I measure it where the ear is, and then I measure it where the jawline is. So where is that jawline? Where does that bone come? and then change direction. She has a very nice jawline. So you really, some people it's a little bit harder to see, but not at her. She really does have a good jawline. So you can, can really put that in here. Then her ear pops up. You can put a little bit of a dark little ear hole. Someone says she looks like Ashley Judd. Aww. That's cool. They probably can't hear what I said. So she, someone said that she looks like Ashley Judd. Probably, yeah, like a really young Ashley Judd, yeah. This model probably is in her early 20s, so. She does, to me, it look like she could be in like, um, uh, what's that fairy? You know, like a, like a HBO fairy show. Where people are fairies. Mm, what's like that movie? Lord of the Rings or something? Or? Well, yeah, what's that other one where people are fairies? Mm. Oh, well that's, that's uh, What's that, the dragons? That, Oh. Don't they all have fairies now? Well, yeah, uh, the new Lord of the Rings one, the prequel, is uh, a lot of fairies. But I'm like, it seems like everybody has fairies. She could, like, if she tried out, she'd probably get a spot. They're more like elves. Oh, okay. Yeah, elves maybe. Okay. So, just finding those is important. Okay, so now, what would I do? to the face. Do, 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 do. You could go in here and noodle and noodle and noodle and noodle. I want to see, should I just keep it all green, Scott, or should I add some pinks? It's up I'm gonna, to you. No, I'm going to force you to give me an answer. I love it. So if it doesn't work out, <laughs> what if the pinks don't work out? But is that okay because it's just a sketch? You mean just a little pink on her lips or cheeks or well, something? Well, like in the lights. Oh, yeah. What if it doesn't work out? Will I be okay? Well, it's okay. a study, I mean, so would yeah. Would I like, be really depressed or think it wasn't worth it? It looks great, so... Or should I just keep it in greens? I, I think know. that is the thing that, like, if you're nervous about color, well, then just do one all in green. And then maybe do one where you do, like, a little bit of green and pink. And then, you know, it's like you just keep stepping up. So I was showing you like my evolution of my work. It is a little bit of like you just take baby steps because sometimes if color is, is new to you and you're just going from like, you know, fluorescent green and fluorescent orange and all this stuff, it can be overwhelming and then not, maybe not feel good, meaning like the colors look a little too much. This is so beautiful. So let me, I'm gonna do it, Scott. I'm gonna, do it! So, I have these pretty colors. I have radiant red, 
radiant magenta, and radiant violet. So obviously that means that I have one that's a little bit redder, one that's a little bit, the magenta is just to add purple, and then, then the violet is just a little bit more blue. Now, what would that look like? You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test them out. So what if I put a little bit of a pea size? So that is the radiant red. That's the purest, the pinkiest of red. And then this is radiant magenta. So you see there's a tiny bit of blue added to that. And then this is radiant violet. Okay, so now that's the bluest of all of them. Now they're all like the same value. It's just that one is a little bit pinker and one is a little bit bluer. So what happens, let me clean my brush. So I'm, okay, so what happens if I add a little bit of this white to, like, let's use this paint first. So we want it to be the same value as the light that we initially put down. So this is the light. I always recommend to people that um, this is pretty much the skin tone, right? So this was the skin tone that I put down. So whenever you need to mix anything, and you need it to be the same value, Scott talks about this all the time, is mix it right next to it, right up next to it. Okay. I kind of like that because the other two pinks, this one looks a little too blue. So maybe I'll use this one. Okay. So now I'm just going to add, I'm going to use a little bit bigger of a brush. I'm just going to try and put some highlights. So now we're going to have that vibrance of, which brush do I want to use? I guess I'll just use this one. So you see how I mix it right next to it. And we see uh, she has this like light on her forehead. So if I just kind of drag a little bit of it. We can still see some of that green underneath. This is definitely how I would paint any sort of highlights. So say you were even painting an apple. You'd have that initial red. You might paint like a little bit of a pink highlight and then over it you might have a little bit of a blue. But it's all about having the same, um, mixing them right next to each other and having that same um, value. So let's take a little bit of this. Okay, now let's do the highlight on the nose. So I have to be very careful because, okay, so the highlight squint, it's right, kind of right there where the bow is, down the center. And then I have to use an even smaller brush to kind of do that very small little, you guys probably can't even tell from the video. But there is this like warm and cool now happening. So I'm going to see exactly where the highlight is. The highlight is higher than I think. She has a cute little upturned nose. The highlight, let's hit the top of the wing of the nose, go over here. And let's put a little. Highlights are things you really have to do one stroke because otherwise they get out of shape and highlights do have shapes. And if you make a mistake, what I have to do is I have to go back into the color of the flesh and then I have to, if I have to kind of like clean it up or make it smaller. So I just, it's almost like using an eraser, but I'm just using that same paint that I used to paint the flesh. Just paint right up next to it. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a little bit um, above the lip. These are small little things, and what if I just got, what if I did this every day? I'd get so much better and so much faster and so much more bold. So that little highlight just at the very top of the lip. All right. Even the lips don't really even have that strong of a highlight. Remember, be careful about making the lips and the lip highlights too bright. Let's just do a little bit of a hint right here. Lips tend to disappear into that valley right next to it. They have a little bit of warmth. All right, and then 
just a little bit down here. Hey, this white balance isn't really getting the colors. Yeah, right. we'll take a better photo of it um, so that you guys can see this pink. But just letting you know that I'm using pink for the highlights. So the eye is blending it. So now my eye actually thinks that the skin tone is pinker than what I did because it's seeing it a little bit more pink. It's like, it's like how our eyes, um, the relativity of it in a way, it's so fascinating. So just maybe a little bit on this cheek. You could do this and really infuse this whole light with more pink, but it's depending on how much you want to do. I don't want to change it so much to be pink. I want it to be just... But a little bit goes a long way. So this is how, like, even no matter what, like, even if you were doing any other color, you want the pink cherry of the cheeks to be the same value. Be careful about going darker, because then it just does, it gets, it doesn't look natural. It looks like it's made out of something else. And we're just hinting at the cheek being warm and having flush. But we don't want her to look like she's wearing, like, clown makeup in a way. Would you make it a little darker in the half tone? Maybe, but I, I'm really just using the pink right now. But yeah, the prettiest color would be like on the half tone. But I have that in the green. I'm just using the, the highlight as this little bit of pink just to see what happens, just in the real lights. So it's, like, it's a little bit of an experiment. You told me to do it. <laughs> I did. You can't tease him and say, I you, might try it and then I not try it. I said, if it doesn't work out, I said, well, that's why I wanted the, uh, that's why I want Scott to tell me. You're telling people to be brave and experiment. Well, okay, but they're far, far away from me, so <laughs> they can't do anything to me. <laughs> yeah, you guys, we'll take a photo of this and you'll be able to see the pinks much more. And I want you just to see how it's like I'm just dabbing it. I'm just hinting at it because I don't want to change the, um, the value. So that's why you have to mix it right next to your skin tone. I hope I'm really, really clear about that. Holly says she loves this color combination. Oh, Holly. It is fun. Holly is into color. She's going to go nutso. Someone is asking if, <laughs> if they should put all of their work they do this week into the media file versus yeah. just posting in the group feed. Well, I think if you can, like all the paintings of Ashley, the one with the shawl, please just go into media file and put your homework in that one folder where it says homework for Ashley. And this, I'm actually going to have to remember, I told you I was going to be nice and give her a name. So we're going to say this is Kayla. And you see how I'm going to, uh, you guys can add your homework to the Kayla file. That way we can separate it. Someone's asking, um, Marissa asks, uh, not sure if it's her screen, but the pink highlights look the same value as the green under it. Yeah. So you better repeat that. So, okay, so no, she's saying that the pink highlights look the same value, and that's exactly what I want. As the green underneath. As the green underneath. It's all about, you see, it's just hinting at different temperatures. So if you guys look at a bougaro, right, you look into the skin tone of that bougaro. Well, you see blues, and you see purples and greens and yellows, but the reason why it works is because they're all the same value. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I don't want to change the value. I, I see how I don't want her cheek to be darker right here because I'm adding pink. I want, um, that's why I'm mixing this pink right next to the skin tone that I, I made, I put in for her. That is definitely the lesson. It's totally what I want. It looks cool. And that's how you would paint anything. So like I was saying, like even an apple, so if, even if you had a red apple, you would just paint those highlights. You don't want the highlights to be out of the value. You want those to be the 
the same as where the lights are. They're just maybe a little bit of a purple highlight or a green highlight or something. Would you add some green also on top of this then and go back you and could. forth? You totally could. It's like that's the whole idea and that's what the pastels do. And that's what the pastels allow me to be a little bit more freer with color because you put down a pink and then you can put down a green and you can be a little bit more um, immediate. For me, it's a little bit easier. Sometimes with oils, it takes me a little bit of, you know, I have to study it a little bit more to make sure I get that value. So I'm actually going stronger and stronger with the pink. It's becoming much, much more um, vibrant. But I'm keeping that pink in this light plane. So, see, I'm just going nuts So I just keep adding pink. I wasn't gonna do it, but Scott gave me the evil eye and said this demo was going to be boring if you didn't do it. So then I'm like, oh, I don't want my stomach to hurt anymore. <laughs> so, color is always the cure for stomach problems. Stomp, yep, color, see, color healed me from my stomach tension. Okay, so this is definitely, you guys will be able to see this much better when we do a little... Um, I think it looks okay now. I switched the white balance, so... Okay. I'm automatic too. So you know nothing in the eyes is lighter as this. It's very, very, very separated. You could go in there and you could give me every little bit of detail in those eyes, but um, it would, wouldn't be as pleasing. It would be too much information. All right, how much time is this? Okay, so we have about 19 minutes and I might touch this a few more minutes after the class, but in general, I hope this lesson helps you a lot. And even those um, lower lids, I know you guys, I see them too. There's like a little light lower lids, but no matter what, keep telling yourself that even you have to hint at them, but they can't come forward. This cannot be brighter or a hard edge. It's all about subtlety and keeping these eye shapes in, the, in here. So, I know, I don't know if that made sense. Everything in the eye socket stays in the eye socket. <laughs> that is very important. It's like Las Vegas, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's the demo.